<laughs> so if you could live Absolutely. forever, would you live forever? Forever. I my my goal with longevity research is to abolish the plague of involuntary death. I don't think people should die unless they choose to die. If I had to choose forced immortality versus dying, I would choose forced immortality. On the other hand, if I chose if I had the choice of immortality with the choice of suicide whenever I felt like it, of course I would take that instead. And that's the more realistic choice. I mean, there, okay. there's no reason you should have forced immortality. You should be able to live into, until you get until you get sick of living, right? I mean, that's and that will seem insanely obvious to everyone 50 years from now. And they will be so, I mean, people who thought death gives meaning to life, so we should all die. They will look at that 50 years from now, the way we now look at the Anabaptists in the year 1000, who gave away all their positions, went on top of the mountain for Jesus, for Jesus to come and bring them to the right. to the ascension. I mean, yeah. it's it's ridiculous that that people think death is 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 good because it, because you gain more wisdom as you approach dying. I mean, of 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 course it's true. I mean, I'm I'm 53, and you know the fact that I might have only a few more decades left. It does make me reflect on on things differently. It it, it 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 does give me a deeper understanding of many things. But I mean, so what? You could get a deep understanding in, in a lot of different ways. Pain is the same way. Like we're gonna abolish pain. And that, that that's even more amazing than, than abolishing death. Right? I mean, once we get a little better at neuroscience, we'll be able to go in and adjust the brain so that pain doesn't hurt anymore. Right. And that, you know, people will say that's bad because there's so much beauty in overcoming pain and suffering. Oh, sure, and there's beauty in overcoming torture too. But and some people like to cut themselves, but not not many, right? I mean, that's an interesting. So, but to push, I mean, to push back again, this is the Russian side of me. I do romanticize suffering. It's not obvious. I mean, the way you put it, it's it seems very logical. It's almost absurd to to romanticize suffering or pain or death. But to me, a world without suffering without pain without death it's not obvious what well then that you can stay like. in the people's zoo people's people zoo torturing with suffering. each other <laughs> no but that, uh, what, what i'm saying is I, I don't what that's i guess what i'm trying to say i don't know if i was presented with that choice what i would choose because it to me no, th this this is a, this is a subtler it's a subtler matter and i've posed it in this conversation in an unnecessarily extreme way. Right. So I, I think I think the way you should think about it is what if there's a little dial on the side of your head and you could turn how much pain hurt. Turn it down to zero, turn it up to 11, like in spinal tap if it wants, maybe through an actual spinal tap, right? So, I mean, would you opt to have that dial there or not? That, that That's the question. The question isn't whether you would turn the pain down to zero all, all, all the time. Would you opt to have the dial or not? My my guess is that in some dark moment of your life, you would choose to have the dial implanted, and, well, and I mean, then it would be there. Just to confess a small thing, I'm. Uh, don't ask me why, but I'm I'm doing this physical challenge currently, where I'm doing 680 push-ups and pull-ups a day. Yeah, yeah. And my I, I that, um, and my shoulder is currently, as we sit here, in a lot of pain, and uh, <laughs> I I don't know. I would certainly right now, if you gave me a dial, I would turn that sucker to zero as quickly as possible. Good. <laughs> but I don't, I think the whole point of this journey is, I don't know. Well, because you're you're a twisted human being. I'm a <laughs> twisted. It's, so I mean, the question is, if am I somehow twisted, am I twisted because I, ha I, I created some kind of narrative for myself so that I can deal with the, with the, with the injustice and the suffering in the world? Uh, or is this actually going to be a source of happiness for me? Well, this is, a, this is a, to an extent, is a research question that humanity right. will undertake, right? So, exactly. I mean, exactly. human, human beings do have a particular biological makeup, which sort of implies a certain probability distribution over motivational systems, right? So, I mean, we, 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 we <laughs> yeah. and that, that is there. Well put. That is there. Now, the, the, the question is, how flexibly can that morph as society and technology change, right? So if if we're given that dial and we're given a society 
in which say we don't have to we don't have to work for a living and in which there's an ambient decentralized benevolent AI network that will warn us when we're about to hurt ourselves you know if we're in a different context can we consistently with being genuinely and fully human can we consistently get into a state of consciousness where we just want to keep the pain dial turned all the way down and yet we're leading very rewarding and, and fulfilling lives right now i suspect the answer is yes we can do that but i i don't i don't know that it's a research i don't question, know like that said. for certain yeah now i'm more confident that we could create a non-human agi system which just didn't need an analog of feeling pain and i think that agi system will be fundamentally healthier and more benevolent than than human beings so i think it might or might not be true that humans need a certain element of suffering to be satisfied humans consistent with the human physiology if it is true that's one of the things that makes us fucked and disqualified to be the be the sup, the super agi right yeah. i mean it, uh, th this is a the nature of the human motivational system is that we we seem to gravitate towards situations where the best thing in the large scale is not the best thing in 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 the small scale according to our subjective value system so we gravitate towards subjective value judgments where to gratify ourselves in the large we have to ungratify ourselves in the in the small and we do that in you see that in in music there's a theory of music which says the key to musical aesthetics is the surprising fulfillment of expectations like you you want something that will fulfill the expectations are listed in the prior part of the music but in a way with a bit of a twist that 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 surprises you and that i mean that's true not only in out there music like my own or that of zappa or or steve vai or or, or buckethead or, or christoph penderecki or something it's even there in in mozart or something it's not there in elevator music too much but that that's 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 why that's why it's boring right but wrapped up in there is you know we want to hurt a little bit so that we can we can feel the we can feel the pain go away like we want to be a little a little a little confused by what's coming next so then when the thing that comes next actually makes sense it's so satisfying right and it's the surprising so, fulfillment of expectations that we said yeah 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 so beautifully put is there um we've been skirting around a little bit but if i were to ask you the most ridiculous big question of what is the meaning of life uh, what would your answer be? Three values, joy, growth, and choice. I, I, I think you, 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 need, you need joy. I mean, that, that's the basis of everything, if you want the number one value. On the other hand, I'm unsatisfied with a, a static joy that doesn't progress, perhaps because of some elemental element of human perversity. But the idea of something that grows and becomes more and more and better and better in some sense appeals to me. But I also sort of like the idea of individuality, that as a distinct system, I have some agency. So there's some nexus of causality within, within this system, rather than the causality being wholly evenly distributed over the joyous growing mass. So I, you start with joy, growth, and, and choice as three basic values. That's, and those three uh, that's things something. could continue indefinitely. That's not, that's something that, you, yeah. that can last forever. Is Absolutely. there is there some aspect of something you called, which I like, super longevity that you well, find I, exciting that what uh, is there in you know, research wise is there ideas in that space that i mean I, I think yeah in terms of the meaning of life this really ties into that because for us as humans probably the way to get the most joy growth and choice is transhumanism and to go beyond the human form that that that, that we have right now right i mean i think human body is great and by no means do any of us maximize the potential for joy, growth, and choice imminent in our human bodies. On the other hand, it's clear that other configurations of matter could manifest even greater amounts of joy, growth, and choice than, 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 than humans do, maybe even finding ways to go beyond the realm of matter that, as, as we understand it right now. So I think, in a practical sense, much of the meaning I see in human life 
is to create something better than humans and 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 go beyond human life. But certainly, that's not all of it for me in, in a practical sense, right? Like I have four kids and 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 a, and a granddaughter and uh, many friends and uh, parents and family and just enjoying everyday human human social existence. But we can do even better. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I I love. I've always, when I could li- live near nature, I spend a bunch of time out in nature in the forest and on, on the water every day and so forth. So, I mean, enjoying the pleasant moment is, is part of it. But the, you know, the growth and choice aspect are severely limited by our human biology. In particular, dying seems to inhibit your potential for personal growth considerably as as, as far as we know. I mean, there's some element of life after death, perhaps. But e- even if there is, why not also continue going in in in, in this in this biological realm, right? In in, su- in super longevity, I mean, you know, we we haven't yet cured aging, we haven't yet cured death. Certainly, there's very interesting progress all around. I mean, CRISPR and, and gene editing can be can be an, an incredible tool. And I mean, right now, stem stem cells. Could potentially prolong life a lot. Like if if you got stem cell injections, of of uh, just stem cells for every tissue of your body injected into every tissue, and you can just have replacement of your old cells with new cells produced by those stem cells. I mean that that could be highly impactful at prolonging life. Now we just need slightly better technology for for ha- having them grow. Right. So you, using machine learning to guide procedures for stem cell differentiation and trans transdifferentiation it's kind of nitty gritty but i mean that that's that that that's quite interesting so I, I think there's there's a lot of different things being done to help with with prolongation of of human life but we could do a, do a lot better so f- for example the extracellular matrix which is the bunch of proteins in between the cells in your body they get stiffer and stiffer as, as you get older and the, the extracellular matrix trans, transmits information both electrically, mechanically, and to some extent biophotonically. So there's all this transmission through the parts of the body, but the stiffer the extracellular matrix gets, the less the transmission happens, which makes your body get worse coordinated between the different organs as you get older. So my friend Christian Schaffmeister at uh, my alumnus organization, the great my alma mater, the Great Temple University, yes. Christian Schaffmeister has a potential solution to this, where he has these novel molecules called spiral ligamers, which are like polymers that are not organic. They're specially specially designed polymers so that you can algorithmically predict exactly how they'll fold very simply. So he designed the molecular scissors that have spiral ligamers that you could eat and would then would then cut through all the glucosapain and other cross-linked proteins in your extracellular matrix, right? But to make that technology really work and be mature is several years of work. As far as I know, no, one, no one's funding it at the moment. But there, So there's so many different ways that technology could be used to prolong longevity. What, what we really need, we need an integrated database of all biological knowledge about human beings and model organisms, like based, hopefully a massively distributed open cog bioatom space, but it can exist in other forms too. We need that data to be opened up in a suitably privacy-protecting way. We need massive funding into machine learning, AGI, proto-AGI, statistical research aimed at solving biology, both molecular biology and human biology, based on this massive, massive data set, right? And, and, and then we need regulators not to stop people from trying radical therapies on, on, on themselves if, if they so, so wish to, as, as well as better cloud-based platforms for like automated experimentation on microorganisms, flies and mice and so forth. And we could do all this. You look, after the last financial crisis, Obama, who I generally like pretty well, but he gave $4 trillion to large banks and insurance companies. You know, now in this COVID crisis, trillions are being spent to help everyday people and small businesses. In the end, we'll probably will find many more trillions are being given to large banks and insurance companies yeah. anyway. Like, could the world put $10 trillion into making a massive, holistic bio AI and bio simulation and experimental biology infrastructure? We could. We could yeah. put $10 trillion into that. 
without even screwing us up too badly, just as in the end, COVID and the last financial crisis won't screw up the world economy so badly. We're not putting $10 trillion into that. Instead, all this research is siloed inside a few big companies and, 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 and government agencies. And most of the data that comes from our individual bodies personally, that could feed this AI to solve aging and death, most of that data is sitting in some, some hospital's database doing nothing, right?